welcome uh, Mint 2020. You just were able to witness Against the Tide, uh, a documentary. I'm just going to read this because I think it's so nicely put. A documentary that documents the very personal stories of shellfish business owners from the East, West, and Gulf Coast, their experience with climate change, and their motivation to take action. Uh, we're going to have a Q&A today with Liz Georges and Sally McGee. Sally's uh, credited as the director, and Liz, um, a co-conspirator, I know, with the Nature Conservancy. You guys are both with the Nature Conservancy, but what was your uh, official title on the film, Liz? Um, I believe I was writer and director as well. We co-directed this. Co-directed. Well, thank you for that correction. Um, so yeah, we have co-directors, Sally and Liz, here to talk about this wonderful film. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and talk about like um, your day-to-day, -day, what you're doing at work these days, uh, what your positions are, and then we'll get into the film right after that. How about we start with Sally? Sure. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, so I work for the Nature Conservancy. That's my day job. I've been there for about 10 years, and um, before that, I was... Um, a shellfish farmer myself. So um, a lot of these people are familiar to me and the, the connection um, uh, has been really great to make through my work at the Nature Conservancy and previous work as a shellfish farmer. That's so cool. Yeah, you're brokering a nice deal there. Yeah. And Liz? Hi, I'm Liz Georges and I am the Assistant Director of Communications for our North American Climate Policy work. And what that means is I get to work with uh, the shellfish growers and with uh, programs across the country that are uh, trying to make change on climate policy and help them with their communication strategy. And I get to help produce things like Against the Tide. That's so cool. It's, it's such a wonderful story and I'm sure everybody that just got done watching it, when they're watching this, they'll agree with that. Um, let's talk about how this project came to you guys, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so um, about three years ago, um, like I said, I was a, a shellfish farmer for a while, and so I knew other farmers. Um, and one uh, gentleman who's in the film, Bill Mook, um, he and I met at an aquaculture conference up in Maine. Um, and we started talking. It was one of those conversations that you think is going to last maybe 10 minutes, and it ended up lasting about two hours. Um, and uh, he had this great idea about working with the Nature Conservancy on climate change because he was seeing impacts of climate change on his business. And he knew that the Nature Conservancy had and, and has uh, climate change as a top priority issue that we work on. Um, so that's where the idea was born. Um, Bill had been talking with um, a half dozen other shellfish growers on the east and west coast and um, they all were seeing impacts of climate change and wanting to do something about it and not wanting to reinvent the wheel and wanting to work with us and so we started with uh, a half dozen growers and now we have uh, 150 uh, members from 20 different states yeah and that's once again that's a quick growth am i right will you, will you say how fast that happened a little less than three years yeah Wow, well done, really congratulations. That's a fast moving tide there. Um, Liz, what was your interaction? How many of the farmers maybe did you know previous to the film and what, what's the interaction with these farmers? They seem like such genuine and wonderful people. Well, they're amazing. And, and we were, I was there at the launch when we, we initially uh, uh, announced that we were forming this coalition. Uh, and I met most of the growers that were there, five or six of them there, and then uh, traveled with Sally for most of the locations we went on the film. And uh, it, what we really were trying to do is help people really get to know these farmers and get to see um, and take them to the farms and take them to these places and help people understand um, sort of why these stories are so important and why these farmers mm -hmm. Um, are, are so um, powerful as a voice for climate change because these are, are, these are not people who, who work in an office every day. These are people who are out there in their hip waders and working on their farm every single day um, trying to make a living. And that makes them sort of on the front lines. And so it's really important, it was really important to sort of help people get a feel for, for what 
their world is like. Yeah, well, mission accomplished. I, I feel like we did get that feel of their life and um, also a feel of their personalities. And that those came through so well on film. And I'm sure a lot of that is both your directing and your editing. So uh, the process, I want to I want to highlight because I think, Liz, you told me last time, but whoever wants to speak on this, this is was a fast project from start to finish. The film took how long? Um, we came up with the idea, I think it was April or May um, of, of 2019. Yeah. Uh, we, we shot through the summer and edited and the first cut of the film we screened at New York Climate Week in September of 2019. Wow. Um, <laughs> oh <but> yeah. <laughs> it was so the, It took That's you like tough. a summer. That's crazy. That's like a summer project. I don't know how you did it. How much travel was involved? Because you, you, you mentioned in your, um, in your coalition, you have uh, every state that has the correct aquaculture as a member, right? You have as a member in your, in, yeah. in your coalition. So you must have been all over the, the country, right? Well, we didn't go to all 20 states. We, you know, we wanted to go to some representative uh, parts of the country. So you know, we were in Washington state. And we wanted to be in the Pacific Northwest. Um, we wanted to be in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and then we definitely wanted to be up in Maine, which is where um, Bill Mook is based and, you know, he's the founder of the coalition. So um, we'd still be on the road if we tried to visit all of them, <laughs> which would well, be okay. What? I wouldn't mind that. There, I mean, some of these places you just go and, and um, like Dottie Lolly's uh, place, with, who's in the film, um, we went there and I, I could see it in Liz's eyes too. She didn't want to leave. I didn't want to leave. <laughs> No, I didn't. I could have spent the rest of my my days on that dock. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. man, really and that was people. Yeah. Where was that located? Where was Dottie's place? That was in Mobile, Alabama. Yeah. In Mobile. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a net. You found your Neverland, huh? Oh, it's gorgeous. You have to go go back and visit. Yes. And I'm sure you're keeping in in contact with the farmers. You guys are closely yeah. communicating. I I actually just tonight, because um, the unfortunately named Hurricane Sally is um, making mm. its way, um, you know, into that part of the world. So I was just emailing um, a bunch of the growers that we know there, including um, that in fact, he's just letting him know, you know, we're thinking about him. So yeah, so we're, we're very much in, in touch with these people. Yep. That's a nice message to pass along to our guests as well, because we do want to send out some positive vibrations for everybody that's going to be impacted by that. Hurricane Sally. Yeah, I feel, I feel for you, Sally. That's a yeah. tough one to have your name attached to, isn't it? <laughs> um, I remember you, you brought up last time that your coalition, you wanted to give people a chance to, to register if they want to be a part of your coalition. Do you want to talk about that for a sec? Um, well, so the coalition is made up of businesses that are um, anywhere along the supply chain for shellfish. So from hatcheries to farms to wholesalers to restaurants. Um, so um, if you look at the list of coalition members, you'll actually see that we have, well, we have members in, in um, Georgia near Atlanta uh, restaurants. Uh, we have a restaurant in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, so all of these, you know, these businesses are dependent on a uh, robust um, shellfish uh, populations from um, these farming operations. So um, all of those business are, businesses are welcome to join. And if we, that list is available. So if we travel to those states, we can make sure we support those businesses that are in your coalition, right? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Also That's follow you. us on Instagram. We have a new Instagram account. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Will you say that one more time, Liz? Uh, yeah, our, our, uh, our account on Instagram is Shellfish for Climate, and that they can follow the work of the coalition and uh, all of the work that our members are doing to promote climate action and talking about climate impacts on their farms. And uh, next time the farmers come to DC to talk to their lawmakers, we'll probably have lots to post on Instagram about that. Oh, I can't wait to see. Um, Sally, I want to ask you a question. You, you brought up last time that you, you intentionally found Mint Film Festival to have uh, your film play at. 
or submit to because you believe that this is a universal story, right? This is something that uh, farmers of all kinds can probably understand and relate to. Yeah, we were, um, we, we very intentionally reached out to men and we're really excited that you said yes to this film. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we really wanted to be able to reach um, different kinds of audiences um, because these people who grow shellfish, they're farmers, um, just like um, farmers who grow things in the dirt. These farmers just grow things on the bottom of the ocean. Um, so, and, you know, the experiences that they have and the impacts that they're experiencing, um, we're hoping will resonate um, with other, um, other types of farmers, um, other people who are, who are engaged in agriculture in other kinds of ways, because they're, um, they're similar, you know, similar kinds of impacts, you know, whether it's, whether it's um, shellfish or um, apples or almonds or cows. <laughs> it all counts. It all matters. Yeah. Um, that's, I think it's, I, I look forward to hearing from, uh, from some of our viewers, uh, if, especially if there are some farmers in the crowd, we, we definitely want to hear yeah. uh, their thoughts on it and how it translates to their own, their own day-to-day -day life. Um, the, uh, this, one other oh, please. Thing I, yeah, one other thing I just wanted to mention about that is, you know, one of the things that our coalition members really want to do and hope happens as a result of um, their um, collective work um, is that they will inspire other food sectors to do the same kind of thing. Um, so, you know, we've, ha we've had some, mm. um, without really trying too hard, we've had interest from um, grape growers um, and um, winemakers um, and from almond growers. Um, so that's the kind of thing that we're hoping, you know, it's not just shellfish. It's, it's mm. yes, shellfish, but it's, you know, it's, that's just what one example of, of, um, you know, sec food sectors that are impacted by climate change. Yeah, that's the trailhead into the wilderness of how they can all work together and yeah. see the impact, the impact together. I really like it. I think you guys uh, did a great job bringing us inspiring stories and you're both inspiring to me. Uh, I, I will admit it on air. I, we'd had this recording or we had this conversation once before and I forgot to press record. So this is the second time that I've been able to talk with Sally and Liz and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I, I think you guys are doing great work and I look forward to seeing what comes uh, ahead for you guys. Thank you. It's been, uh, it's been great to be part of the festival. We're really excited. Oh man, we can't wait. We're, we're, uh, yeah, we're right. We're right down to it. Um, 17th is going to be opening night. So I guess by the time we have this up, it'll be past opening night, but, uh, I look forward to getting to talk to people about your film. I really do. Cause, uh, you're talking about things that, that we all need to be looking at and it's cool to find it in such a new spot. I mean, I would have never thought to look at shellfish for the information on, uh, you know, what we all need to do next possibly, or how we need to, how we need to maybe find our way out of this together. But you guys, you guys highlighted it and I thank you for it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Ryan, could I just add one more thing? Please, as many um, things as you want to add. So, so I think, you know, one of the things that has been um, really exciting about the coalition is um, the fact that we have members in 20 states. Um, and we have members in congressional districts that um, are um, not just blue, but deep, deep red. Um, and the kind of, um, kind of conversations that our coalition members can have with their members of Congress, regardless of their political affiliation, uh, regardless of the coalition members affiliation, regardless of their members of Congress affiliation, it's the same. Uh, because they, uh, you know, members of Congress or other policymakers understand, um, you know, if a small business owner comes to them and says, I, there is this impact on my business, it's affecting my ability to make a living and to employ, you know, a couple of people or dozens of people, um, that, gets, that gets policymakers' attention. 
Um, and that's one of the most powerful things um, about the coalition is um, the ability to um, make those kinds of connections with a full array of policymakers. And it, it's, I think, even more than that, these, these shellfish growers are part of these, you know, shoreline, small town communities. I mean, these are not, you know, uh, large businesses that have, you know, that are, are spread out across lots and lots of different states. These are small business owners and they're in, you know, usually small coastal communities. Um, and they're sort of the center of a, 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 a piece of America that uh, is, is really special and is every bit as, uh, as important and community centered as small towns in the Midwest or small towns in Montana um, or small towns in the South. And I think that, that um, that's part of why these growers are such powerful messengers um, for the need for climate action um, because they're not, you know, they're, they're yeah. not somebody who works for a green group. They're somebody who's trying to make a living right. out of the, out of the, 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 their two hands and the ocean. That's such, yeah. And that's such a beautiful story. And I think that's it, when you, when you speak about it that way, the simplicity, well, I wouldn't say simple, but it, in practice, it seems like a fairly simple form of farming. I mean, even the way it appears in the in the film, it's kind of like, um, it's almost uh, intuitive. I, it seems like that's maybe how a farmer comes into it is they're actually kind of intuitive about it and they can grow those things almost with magic, it seems like. And it's, it's so neat that it's almost, a, I think, is it, is it mentioned as a passive? I can't remember the terminology that was used in the documentary, but as far as a form of protein goes, this thing doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt the, it doesn't hurt anybody really to make it. And in fact, there's huge benefits to growing oysters. I mean, that's one of the things that over and over, when you talk to oyster farmers, they know um, that these, these little guys that they're growing in the water are helping to, to keep the water clean. They're helping to provide some resilience against storms, um, all sorts of benefits to, to growing oysters. Mm. And in fact, um, in many instances, you're talking about places where the wild populations of oysters are, are pretty much gone. And so having the farmed oysters is incredibly important to restoring um, oyster populations in the areas that they're being grown. Wow. Yeah, it's very important. It's very important and it seems like a natural start. And then I'm, thanks to a film like yours, uh, we can all learn from that and hopefully continue the conversation into, I know that farmers are attached to the land or whatever it is that they grow in more than I could ever be. But um, this seems like a, a when I look at these shellfish farmers, I was just so impressed at their integrity. And I'm not saying I know anything about other farmers, but just looking at these shellfish farmers, I was, uh, the, you, you just did a great job of highlighting their personalities and their true natures. And I look forward to finding out how far they can get with this fight for what they're fighting for. Um, yeah. So we'll have to check back in with you, no doubt. Absolutely. Or you'll have to come out with a sequel, a sequel film to this. <laughs> We'll, we'll hopefully have a festival every year. So we'll take as many of these as you'll, you'll give us. Yeah. I was looking forward to coming to Montana. I've never been. So we'll, we'll have to do that so that that can happen. I yeah. would love for that to happen. We, we, mm -hmm. That's certainly uh, one of my favorite parts about, about being a part of the festival is showing people our hometown. I, I really am thoroughly impressed by it. The more I get to introduce people to it, it's a, it's a fun part of being a festival. Absolutely. So, yeah. Whenever we can get you here, uh, you, you're, uh, we'll see how, how, how fundraising goes. We maybe even can get you out here on, uh, we might even be able to help, you know, I love <laughs> making those promises cause it's, you know, cause don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not part of the fundraising team, <laughs> boy, thankfully. Um. But yeah, um, we really yeah. are so, we're so glad that, that um, I'll just say again, we're just so glad that you said yes to this film mm. um, and are so happy to have it um, screening in, in Montana. Um, yeah. that's, 
that's just the kind of thing that we were hoping would happen um, when we started this project. So, yeah. Cool. I'm really excited to see, uh, you know, where it goes from here. We'll definitely be in touch. Absolutely. And uh, you're both very, very talented filmmakers and inspiring ladies. So thanks. Thanks for being on our question and answer session too.